Hello, um, this is uh, my second attempt of making this video and um, I had to um, do a second version because um, the first one was so poor um, I uh, viewed it again um, after uploading it to YouTube and uh, realized I uh, missed out all the main points I was trying to make so here is my second attempt <laughs> and it's all about a new um, record player that I uh, um, bought off Gumtree and this is the Ariston Pro um, 1200 uh, record player um, and I got it for um, £50 and the idea was um, that I'm going to upgrade from my uh, current um, AWA uh, automatic record player to this record player so um, I started um, um, making a video of um, the record player um, I bought um, and uh, showing you um, the state it was in um, and uh, just cleaning it up and showing you how um, uh, how in a good state it is overall so it's not like another, um, the other recordings that I made where I had to fix broken tape decks or CD players um, this one um, is okay it just needed a bit of cleaning up um, a, a bit of a TLC and uh, it's ready to go and the idea is that um, I'm going to um, learn and uh, find out what the audio differences between a cheap um, record player um, against a slightly better made record player with um, a good stylus and so this um, Ariston um, Pro 1200 um, is styled in the the same vein as um, the um, Technics um, SL 1200 um, with a curved arm and um, speed detection and um, counterweight um, so I got it off this guy who um, replaced it with a brand new uh, Regia Planar P2 and on this record um, player he had a um, really expensive um, cartridge for the stylus so he took it off and he fitted this um, Regia carbon stylus or cartridge to to this record deck before selling so when it was advertised I thought yes a, a brand new um, stylus or cartridge um, so I uh, thought about the price and essentially I've um, watch a few other videos and the tip is that um, when you buy a second hand record player you have to think about replacing the the cartridge or the stylus or the head immediately um, because um, you don't know what state it's in and the poor quality sound you will get from it or the fact it might um, damage your record is an issue so you just uh, purchase a brand new one but since this one um, came with a brand new head I thought it was uh, a bargain at 50 quid so you, you're spending roughly um, half the price for the head as you are uh, for the record player 
So this budget buy is £25 for the um, record player and then £25 for the cartridge. Now, I thought the Reja, um carbon cartridge was um, very good until I uh, watched another YouTube video in um, that compared um, an Audio-Technica stylus with this one and he was uh, essentially hinting that they're exactly the same uh, except for the Regia Carbon has the Regia Carbon uh, stamp on it instead of the Audio Technica stamp and the stylus or the cartridge the Audio Technica um, one you can um, buy from online from eBay and various sources for $11 and uh, um, the Regia Carbon head you can buy for uh, $50. So um, he was hinting that um, they were the same. Um, so here I am just um, going through the fact that everything is working to um, as it should on this uh, record player and I didn't have to do much to it at all apart from clean it up and uh, I'm just testing it out with um, a record that I've got um, and uh, we'll see how it, it sounds and how it plays now this record um, obviously is an audiophile um, standard uh, record that I everybody used to uh, rate their either record player, stylus, speakers, stereo system, everything. But the thing about this one is like I've got it at a, a fair for one pound. And um, it's so cheap because it's got these scratches on it. And um, obviously you can't test anything where um, your the record itself is in a poor state. And so I use it to uh, test as a test record because um, I'm not going to be using it to um, listen to the uh, listen to the playback in high quality um, in in high quality audio listening sense. Um, there's also um, some videos about attempting to clean scratches off records um, some techniques or tips and I might follow um, one or two of those and see if I can get this um, record to stop um, popping at all the scratches maybe that was it's worth a, a video or two um, to see how it goes but um, here I am just playing it and um, showing you that um, I, I do get st um, steady sound, um, good um, audio coming out of this um, record deck. So, you know, everything is um, it's okay. Uh, 50 pounds is a bargain. It's got a solid bass. It's got adjustable feet. Um, uh, it's got a um, Perspect cover that's not cracked um, and I couldn't ask for anything more um, so um, the only slightly funny thing about this record deck is the tracking now um, he said that was uh, recently um, updated or fixed or um, or um, looked at and verified that it's working and tracking okay and the problem I have with it is like the the um, tracking head itself has just um, it seems to be out of alignment it doesn't seem to uh, be um, straight uh, here I'm just um, yeah showing you the pitch control and the pitch control is um, essentially a speed control. It either 
you can either increase the the um sorry adjust the the speed slightly and so if you spin it one way it'll uh go uh faster and spin it the other way it will um go a bit slower but obviously these are tiny adjustments not not like a switch between um 33 or 45 rpm um sort of speed adjustment so the the, the speed tracking um mechanism also um maintains the spinning of the disc in a very um consistent way so you don't get wow and flutter as they call it um where the the sound just wobble slightly because um the speed um changes or in fact sometimes on the record itself is is warped but here yeah everything seems okay um the this record player obviously is um different to your um cheap automatic record player uh, um so i will um talk about that um in the third part of this video so the second part of this video would be um just showing you the my original record player that i'm upgrading from so i have this um i have this awa um record player here on the on the left here and it's got um stickers all over it because i'm you know, i was trying to hide all the cr um cracks in the perspect cover and here you see it's um quite dusty itself but um it's fully automatic so it's got all the um your regular buttons your speed control your um arm control and um stop and start uh, buttons and here i'm just showing you that everything everything else is okay apart from this um arm uh, rest it's uh, broken the clip that holds it in place is broken and here i'm showing you that this record player has an audio technica cartridge um or stylus or head um so yeah there you go i'm just showing you that there's a button to lift up the arm and lower it um it's got a speed uh, record size um control uh and um and i'm just going to show you um what this um standard cheapo record player design is like um um there it is so this platter i'm going to attempt to take off but obviously it's held in by a c-clip in the middle there so and just like all record players um you can get access to the belt to take it off the motor so you can take the whole thing off um yeah so i'm just showing you there that i can't take that off i can take the belt off but i can't take the the platter off without removing the c-clip yeah so once um your belt's falling off you have to uh, remove the whole thing and um before you can put it back on um yeah it's a bit stiff i'm taking it off for a while and there it is there's there's the belt and you can't get it on really without taking the platter off and um yeah so i'm just going to um rewind it and pause it right here um if you watch my other video i um attempted to re uh, repair a sony uh, record deck uh record player uh, also a, a poor, poorly cheaply made one um although it has um slightly different mechanism to this one 
the principle um, works in the same way. And so the the problem I have uh, with the Sony is that um, when the arm, when the stylus arm gets to the middle of the record, i.e. at the end of the record, it should trigger uh, a mechanism similar to this to say uh, it's finished, so return the arm back and uh, stop the record, um, stop it playing. So here you can see in full detail how this mechanism um, is set up to do that. Um, so on the Sony one, it's slightly different. Uh, well, completely different. Um, although it's got the same um, middle cog to um, knock off some lever or so to indicate that it's it's stopped and uh, it should auto return but obviously the, the Sony one was broken and I couldn't find a way to repair that at all so here um, I'm just showing you that the AWA uh, another standard design um, has this um, all working just fine and uh, if anybody has um, is stuck on how this arrangement is set up. This is um, one such um, working um, alignment. Um, so what I'm just gonna do here is probably just clean um, the inside of this up a bit and you see flecks of black um, dust that's gathered over time. The motor um, seems working okay nothing's cracked, nothing's broken, so it's it's serving well, um, I don't use it a lot um, but um, uh, now that I want to um, get into record playing um, I'm going to upgrade I'm going to move from using this record player to the Ariston and um, I'm going to um, make some videos detail, detailing you the differences or the the experience that I am going to gather uh, in moving over. So yeah, so here I'm just stopping and starting and obviously you, you can't see the motor turning but that's what it does. Um, so the only issue I have with this record player is um, that when you give it power, there's no on and off button, there's just a uh, power uh, lead to it. And when it's powered up, there's just a hum, a general, general um, low level hum. And I don't know um, uh, what's causing it, and I'm not sure I want to fix it, to be honest. Uh, but um, it could be just a uh, power supply that's old and needs replacing to get rid of the hum. Um, so that's my journey into um, records and analog sound and music goes. I've discovered that this... Um, record player has a uh, phono preamp that you can turn on and off and as my knowledge expands into uh, how to connect these things up to a, a, an amplifier um, I discovered that the phono input um, uh, is there to pick up really low level um, output um, so lots standard output is line output and line output is um, pre-amplified um, signal so if you want to plug this record player into a line input on your um, amplifier 
then you need to turn the phono preamp off. And so, um, sorry, uh, you turn the uh, phono preamp on so that the level, um, so that your amplifier can detect that level. If you uh, connect this record player directly to the phono inputs of your amplifier, if it has any, you need to turn the preamp off so that the f because the phono input on your amplifier is there to pick up really low level input so you don't want to o over amplify the input okay so on some um, record players you have um, also a ground um, cable or wire that um, you connect to your amplifier ground um, um, facility so there there'll be a, a a screw on the back of your amplifier that you can connect that to On this AWA unit, um, the PXE850, it doesn't have a ground, so um, I'm not sure why, um, may maybe because it's just completely made out of plastic and there's nothing to earth, but um, maybe it's just cheap because you know the electricity coming into it to drive it um, needs to be earth somehow um, and they made away with that and uh, so there's no earth but on the Ariston the, um, there is an earth wire um, and that lies in between the uh, left and right output um, lead and um, you can earth that to your um, amplifier so here it is in action and it does what it um, is supposed to do and it, it plays quite well um, the sound that I get from it um, now that I've got another um, record plays to compare against is uh, very similar but um, I can definitely hear more detail on um, the Ariston than I can on the, the AWA so either the, the cartridge uh, is is um, making that difference or the fact that um, um, the, the quality of the the output on the um, record uh, player itself is making that difference. Um, so um, you see me there, just um, showing you a cleaning technique, which is. Um, some uh, window cleaner and a brush and we just slowly brush away all the dirt that is uh, gathered up over year over the years uh, into areas that can't be reached with a cloth so this technique is quite um, effective um, and doesn't damage your um, devices in any way or other um, obviously when I got it home I um, gave it a, a quick clean already but here I'm getting to the detail um, into the tiny uh, areas where dust uh, has uh, been gathering up 
Um, and obviously this technique um, can be done on any device, including the cheapo AWA unit. Yeah, and just showing you the scratches. Um, they're nothing uh, amazing, uh, but the quality of the perspex covering is um, good. So those um, scratches haven't turned into cracks themselves. And um, if you saw before how dusty these um, hinges were, now they're all cleaned and uh, looking more respectable. Um, it is a bit of a beast. Um, so when I was buying it off the guy, um, he said he's replaced it with the more stylish, modern looking, co more compact Regia uh, Planar 2. So so yeah, this is me going back to um, the, the um, Awa and obviously I've cleaned that up slightly also and I'm just showing you the back of the label and it says replacement stylus AN-11 and um, I don't know if the AN-11 is just a unbranded um, Audio Technica um, dash 11 stylus or cartridge um, I'm not sure but um the the comparison video um he um he compared it with really uh, some really um technical uh, measurements and um audio files and there's hardly any differences between that audio technica eleven dollars cartridge to the Regia um carbon cartridge. Um yeah, everything's working, and you can see here from um this picture here the the tracking device is not it's not vertical enough it seems to be slanting um slightly on the right um and that knob there is untwistable I've tried it and it's like maybe it's just knocked out slightly, but um it's not at all. So um yeah, so I'm just showing you that there um that all these dots on the platter itself is the thing that's um been tracked and to verify that the the tracking is working properly I'm using something to detect whether the red light is hitting uh, the dots and as you can see it, it is really um so it, it should be working and uh, the inner two lines of dots is the one um, we're most interested in because um, we're running on 50 hertz here um, in the UK so so I'm going to explain about the um, Ariston Pro 1200 and uh, the record player is uh, a manual record player in the sense that there's no switches to to um, tell the arm to go into the record to play and when it, um, the record's finished the arm will just stay in the, the center of the record um, indefinitely before you uh, um, turn it off I return it to its starting position and off. So here I'm showing you the arm and the stylus itself and uh, yeah so I'm just going to show you here that actually you can't damage the um, stylus head itself um, at this point. It, it just bangs against the, the plastic um, outer casing if you happen to drop it onto this um, 
this side of the the platter. Um, obviously, you can put it on the platter, and I'm just showing you the um, the arm has uh, a manual. A um, a manual mechanism to raise the head and to lower the head and here I'm showing you how the cartridge is connected by these four um, electrical connections from the head itself uh, down the arm and um, two screws at the top to align the, the head properly or to to hold the head properly not too sure just showing you that um, this rubber ring here is a bit degraded I don't know uh, if that's important or not but it doesn't look uh, like an issue so here we have um, the clip in place that, that's the thing broken on the AWA and at the back here we've got a counterbalance for the arm now I'm showing you that the plastic measuring um, thing at the front just freely spins so it doesn't actually indicate accurately how heavy or how counterbalanced the thing is so the weight just comes off the arm like that and uh, yeah and here's a notch in the measurement spinny thing at the front um, don't know if that's broken or supposed to be a notch so inside there's just this um, track um, that allows this the back of the arm to move along it and at the bottom there's a notch that runs into the groove or the track of the, the inner side of that counterweight and that counterweight just slides on like that and at some point it clicks into place and to be honest if you use a bit of force you can you can move it right in but once it clicks into place you can just spin it and it moves back and forth and I suppose that it's a starting point somewhere where you can align this um, measuring dial and then once it's aligned up to where you think zero is you can turn and turn and turn and the measurement the reading will be 1.5 whatever that indicates and obviously the, the idea is that it does indicate the the weight the counterbalance weight of the head so in o in other videos that you might uh, watch there are some audio uh, files who um, have m measuring head measuring equipment so they can set and calibrate their um, record deck um, completely um, to the recommended weight that you should um, set your arm to for the cartridge or the head that you're using but obviously I'm starting off and I don't have any of that equipment so here I'm just taking this um, platter off and I'm shaking it to indicate that it's quite a substantial um, platter it's quite heavy and um, the, um, I suppose that's a quite sign of quality because the heavier it is the more stable it's going to uh, be and so you won't get any vibration or noise unwanted vibration or noise going up your on your arm and on your stylus and on your head and again it's it's the same um, design as you got you got in an inner circle where the where the belt lives and you just wrap that onto the inner circle holding it out um, so that you can hook it onto the motor when you put the platter back in place and as you can see um, both record decks are belt driven and um, the, the way the motor 
connects to the belt and the belt connects to the platter it's a standard uh, way and here I am uh, putting the um, anti-slip mat back on and taking my test record and um, placing that onto the the platter and I've got this um, record cleaning velvet brush and the idea is to just remove obvious dust and dirt of your record uh, by softly picking up the dirt um, I think it's a um, gen general uh, good habit to pick up to clean all your record like this before playing them um, that keeps some of the dirt away from the, the head from the stylus itself but within that brush there's a tiny little brush that can come out and you use that tiny brush to remove dirt that's gathered on on the needle itself so here I am just manually putting the head to the record and lowering it uh, just to indicate that I've um, amateurly amateurly um, an unprofessional way of balancing my head my arm my needle onto the record um, and as you see there you can adjust things <coughs> to your heart's content to get it right either you can over balance it or you can put it into a state where the, the arm is balanced and the needle lies on the record so that it can be played without damaging your record um, so the first time I, I got it home and I played something on it um, this head was just um, sliding all over the place and I don't didn't understand why and um, subsequently found out that obviously it hasn't been calibrated at all um, even in a bad way um, so it was sliding all over the record um, so to fix that obviously you counterbalance it you adjust the counterbalance so that the head stays on and this record player like most professional record player has an anti-skating um, adjustment and that would um, stop um, some of the um, movement of the head if it's not connected to um, the fact that it's not counterbalanced properly um, I haven't gone into much detail or I haven't found out much about um, the skating issue that you get on the record. I just know there is one and it's caused by um, some sort of um, record function that you need to uh, adjust. So here, after a little messing around, as you can see, I can put the the head onto the record just fine and I can play it and I can get quality sound out of it so there, there's the anti-skating adjustment um, um, I think the impression is like it's some sort of drift that occurs. Um, the idea is that if you 
um, drop your arm onto the record and if it's not playing it should be stationary it shouldn't move at all and it shouldn't drift either in towards the record middle or outwards so the skating aspects of it is the fact that um, you should allow the record grooves themselves to move the arm in and out and it shouldn't have any opposing force either way um, so here I am just adjusting the pitch control and as I explained earlier the pitch control slows the record down slightly or speed it up slightly micro adjustments and you can hear it when you move this in um, a minus or plus um, so this this knob just comes off and um, you can just calibrate it properly and it it goes to a maximum of five and then it goes to a minimum of five and then as my expertise level is um, not that high I'm going to set it to um, zero and let the um, let the record deck itself tell me what speed it should be at so this record here is at 33 rpm and um, I shall leave it at that to the me messing about with this anti skating again and then lifting the arm up and dropping it down to the last track. Now, the last track is the one with the huge scratches, and each time the, uh, the needle hits one of these scratches, it pops. Um, so this is the um, this is the um, attributes of an uh, an analog device or an analog record as opposed to a digital CD that um, all the sound is. Um, all, all the sound information is on the grooves and if the grooves get damaged um, the sound in some way will change whereas with a, with a CD if um, there's no information you won't hear anything um, so your ears don't notice so here I'm just showing you that the, um, it's not 100% um, fine this record uh, player the feet can be adjusted on the right but on the left the feet um, some sort of threading is gone and I can't lower or raise the feet to uh, balance the record player so that's why you see a bit of a uh, paper underneath on one side uh, which I used to kind of like micro balance the, the whole um, turntable so there it is playing away quite happily uh, in the middle uh, with the cover on and um, I think I've shown you everything there everything is completely manual if, if you want to move on to the next track you can you have to lift the head up and then move it to the the, the track yourself and I'm just showing you here that if I move it to the end of the record it would then um, carry on spinning and playing this blank track at the end and continuously loop until you um, stop the record and return the arm manually yourself so with the AWA because it's all automatic then once it reached the end of the record like this it would just um, lift itself up and return itself to the 
uh, resting arm and um, turn itself off. Um, there, there you go, there's me having to lift it off manually, stopping the record, stopping um, the playback. Um, and actually, I, I go on to turn it around to play the other side. And again, more dust, so um, you have to clean that off with the uh, velvet um, cleaner. And you see there, this tiny brush in the window at the top where I can take that out and clean the stylus itself. So all in all, um, the experience of playing a record is completely ritualized in this manual behavior. And so that's why records are more collectible because you have a personal attachment with them because you're handling them every time you play the music and then you're enjoying the music and then you um, have to take care of your um, collection afterwards. And this interaction with um, analog records, uh, I think everybody appreciates um, unlike CDs where it doesn't matter how badly you treat your CDs they still play back in exactly the same way um, they're not so so tactile as a record you don't have to have special um, storage for them and um, you merely enjoy the music itself and you enjoy the convenience of skipping two tracks with a press of a remote, remote control button um, So, yeah, it's a, it's a whole different experience with um, a record to um, a CD. And um, it's not, it, not only that experience is different, the audio output is going to be different, but obviously um, only after a while when you gain experience of listening to um, analog devices do you realize um, the sound quality differences between the two um, so yeah so I hope this video is um, slightly um, slightly better than the other one but um, I will remove the other one so that um, you, you never get to see it anyway, so you probably won't know the differences between the two recording, but hopefully this will be um, slightly uh, slightly better. So that's it. That's the end of this video. So I'm going to leave it at this and probably move on to... Um, sorting out or maybe comparing uh, a few of the records either on the record decks himself between the record decks himself or between um, the CD uh, a CD version of it and a record version of it but um, yeah thanks for watching I'll see you next time